time for the Ron and Brian podcast. Get ready to fill your ears with the latest news, politics, current events, and whatever else we feel like talking about this week. And now, your hosts, Ron and Brian. And good evening, everybody. It is Sunday night. It's 8 o'clock, and it is time for episode 298 of the Ron and Brian podcast. Back after a, uh, a short hiatus, uh, Brian, so damn good to see you. You were gone for a couple of weeks. You are back. Yeah. Tell me how you're doing this evening. Oh, I'm doing great. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, you know, uh, these past two Sundays, I missed uh, partaking in uh, this podcast. Two weeks of Sundays where I spent doing other things. And you, you pointed out, you called, you, you, you called me out. Um, you know, reached out to me. Everybody, you know, fans of the show know I was on a trip overseas. I went to Hong Kong and into mainland China. Uh, it was a, a trip with my lady and her family. It was a, just a, I was having a really good time. Um, but, uh, you know, you reached out to me and you uh, you said, listen, get on FaceTime, get, get into Wi-Fi. We need to talk. And, um, you know, sometimes you veer off course. You um, fail to see priorities. You you look at things from perspectives that just you know are not really uh, the priorities of your life. And and one of the things you have in you know the the role you play is that you always bring me back to center. You have a consistently um, uh, this ability to drive me back to the fifty yard line to show me where the middle lane is. And when you said to me, "Listen, I understand. You know, you love your lady. I understand you want to support her and." you know, do these things, but you know, you've got to come back. You've got to be, you got to focus. You've got to focus. Yeah. And I needed to hear that. I, I, you know, it was, I was, I was was forgetting what was important. Yeah. And, um, you know, I appreciated that, which is why, um, here, uh, on, uh, Sunday we're, we're doing this show on Sunday, April 7th. Um, I'm where I should be, which is on the right hand side of this TV screen, um, that you're watching right now, if you're listening to the audio version, you're missing out on something. Ron, um, yes. I, I'm noticing a different background. You are not in your home office, unless unless in the past two weeks you did a major renovation project I'm unaware of. Um, I did not. You know, as we will uh, as we'll discuss, you know, later on in the show, um, there was a, a, a seismic event that took place in the Northeast this past week. I'm still waiting for structural engineers to come in and test the uh, the stability of the Ron and Brian home office. Until that time, mm-hmm. um, I have sequestered myself in a secure location underground um, to avoid any aftershocks um, or anything that might uh, try to do me harm. So um we'll we'll broadcast here tonight hopefully next week i will be back at ron and brian central but um i'm just glad to have you back and i'm just glad thank you to be doing the show here with you once again it is, it is great to be back should we get things going then why the heck not all right it's time drink, drink of the week Drink of the week. 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 Brian, what are you drinking tonight? This week, I know everybody was sitting there expecting uh, me to show up with a uh, a Chinese beer, Hong Kong beer, some beer that I snuck through customs. Well. You are wrong. Oh, this week we are going to upstate New York. We are going to Cooperstown, New York, oh. my personal favorite brewery in America, other than Broken Goblet. Let's Broken Goblet and Ben Salem, PA. That's my favorite. Number two, sure, sure. they are the great people. Let's see if you oh, can man, capture man. this over at Amagang. I'm drinking their Hennepin, which is a Saison, Saison. How do you pronounce it? Saison. 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 I am drinking. Look at the haziness of this bitch. Very hazy. Um, Ron, this is this is the Amagang Hennepin. It's inspired by the traditional rustic brews of Belgium. 
Their iconic American farmhouse, Saison, is charmingly complex, but eminently drinkable, artfully spiced with coriander, ginger, orange peel, and grains of paradise. Its champagne-like effervescence leads to a crisp, dry finish, delighting discerning drinkers everywhere. While delicious on its own, Hennepin pairs remarkably well with a podcast. That's why I'm drinking it. Coming in at a 7.7 ABV, hey, 24 yeah. IBU, more oh, important, <laughs> beer advocate score, 92. Outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Amagang's Hennepin. Uh, take a sip. I, I do like the Hennepin. It's got a bit, bit of a kick to it, but it is a great beer. Oh. You're like taking it back. Like it's a, it's a higher level beer. It's you're drinking a beer, but it's but it's just it's it's a different level experience. Uh, second sip, mm. very nice. I've got a second one in the beer fridge. Um, this is not it, that that's not going to last um, until after dark. I will be going through two this um, this episode. All right, um, I like it. So highly recommend Amagang Hennepin. Um, Ron, I understand you are in an underground bunker. I do not know if the Secret Service were able to give you enough time to access your beer fridge uh, while they rushed you off to this undisclosed location. Um, so if you could let us know, sure, what are you sure. drinking? So I actually have, if you've ever been to like a, a drive through at a bank, the tube system. Um, they have for deposits and things. Yeah. I have one of those in this bunker. It's specifically for beer cans and bottles to be sent down to me. Uh, so the Secret Service uh, sent me from Big Timber Brewing in Elkins, West Virginia. This is their Country Roads Trust Lager. It is uh, a light lager brewed in West Virginia with Mountain State water and American hops. It's so patriot. If beer cans wore a hat, it'd have a little red MAGA cap on it. Um, but it is also 15% of sales will go to Country Roads Trust. Don't know what that is. Hopefully um, not uh, paying the legal fees of uh, a certain former president, but um, trying to find the alcohol. Only 4%. It's a, so it's a, a lighter lager. Um, I don't have any glasses here in the bunker. Um, they okay. try and keep, you know, they try and keep uh, glassware um, uh, belts, uh, shoelaces, things of that nature yeah. out of here in case, you know, yeah. uh, things happen, accidents happen. I don't want to, I don't want a Vince Foster type situation in this bunker, but enough talking. Let me have a sip of this, uh, this lager. As the man takes a, uh, a wasn't a big pull oh, from that can. Ooh. It's a good, it's a good drink. Hold on. As it, does it taste like MAGA? Does it taste like MAGA? It doesn't. It doesn't. It and honestly, it's, it's very uh, Yingling like. I would put it probably really? in, in that category where it's not too heavy, uh, not too much of a bite. Like it's a it's a crushable beer. Like this is definitely one um, you could you could sit on your front porch um, of your double wide on a on a hot summer day and uh, look down your nose um, at uh, minorities and immigrants while crushing sure. these beers. So. And also looking uncomfortable, you know, looking uncomfortably familiar with the um, uh, uh, fifteen-year-old girls that uh, also live in your trailer park. <laughs> yes, you are correct. Yes. Sir. No, All right. No. Uh, you know, I may have to try. I may have to have them send another one of these down the tube. So um, I may have to go knock on the uh, the pipes three times as a signal. We'll see. Sure. Sure. In the meantime, sure. uh, you know what's next, Brian? It's beef of the week. Brian's Beef of the Week. Brian, what's bothering me this week? Sixteen hour flights. Oof. That's what's bothering me. It is a concept that had never actually seen. Um, it didn't seem real to me. It was something that, uh, you know, people had spoken about, people had um, written about, they had blogged about it, vlogged about it, they had tweeted about it, they had Facebook messengered about it, 
they had. But this time's gotta stop. Anyway, continue, please. Um, Ron, I'm going to just say this to you: the um, horror that is um, uh, the reality, the moment when you look at your clock and you realize that you have been on this plane for seven hours. Keep in mind, that is the length of most people's work schedule, seven, eight hours. Imagine that you have been on a plane for seven, eight hours, and you are just reaching the halfway point of your flight. Now, the lady and I flew directly from JFK to Hong Kong. That is a 16-hour flight. We chose not to do a stopover. Um, It just didn't make sense from a time perspective. Um, It's horrible. I will say this. um, The only thing that salvaged it was that we did the bulkhead row where – the, there was no row in front of us, but there was a, oh, nice. a, a, a gap in space. And then there was the seat where the stewardesses and stewards sat during takeoff and landing. So from my seat, I literally could extend my legs as far as I could. Um, had the ability to stand up, walk around. Did not have to worry about somebody in front of me lowering their seat. We spoke about this multiple times. That, you know, to me, that is just a violation of humanity. Um, But a 16-hour flight is genuinely... It's it's excessive. um, It is... uh, You feel like you have entered um, purgatory that um, will last forever. Will last forever. Um, But we were on Cathay Pacific, not Cathay Specific, which, you know, was, you know, the way I pronounced it the first couple of times. Um, and the staff, they do take very good care of you. Um, food was way better than on an American airline. Um, but at the end of the day, a 16 hour flight, you do want to start killing yourself. I don't know how people in regular economy sat. Uh, multiple people pointed out that they are flight attendants, Brian, and not stewardesses. (laughs) Okay. Just blame it on the beer, Brian. No, I'm not blaming it on the beer. I'm blaming it on the fact that I started flying in the 70s, people. Okay, in the <laughs> 70s. So, you know, I grew up in a time where you could ask a stewardess for a deck of cards and they would bring it to you and you would be able to play cards on your um, a deck of cards and a pack of smokes. And, and they were free. Time. I remember the last couple rows of the um, airplane was the smoke. Fucking forgot about that. But I remember the last couple rows of the plane was the smoking section. I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to ask if I could get a little pin of the airline and I could get that. Now you don't get that anything. You get nothing. No. You're lucky. Though I will say on Cathay Pacific, peanuts. They gave us peanuts. Wow. That's like verboten in most areas now. I looked around hoping to see somebody's face swell up so I could go over and eat my second pack of peanuts, but it wasn't happening. But yeah, let's be brutally honest, 16-hour flight, absolutely hellish, almost as hellish as being in um, Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, But who knows? I mean, there there are several levels of hell out there. Ron, let me ask you. um, I have not asked you this question. This is in in more than two weeks, so I'm going to ask you this right now. Yes. What's bothering you? You know what's bothering me, Brian? I'm going to tell you what's bothering me. The, the state of New Jersey, Brian, is bothering me. And, and I've had I've had gripes with the state of New Jersey uh, previously and again this week. You want to know what my problem is with the state of New Jersey, Brian, is that for whatever reason, New Jersey cannot seem to keep its tectonic plates in line. And for that... Great cities like Philadelphia and New York City have to bear the brunt of an earthquake caused within New Jersey. Um, It's unacceptable. um, And I think the Garden State needs to get its act together. That's, um, but now do you think New Jersey has any role to play in controlling whether the earthquake takes place or not? I mean, it, it happened on your watch, Brian. Um, in New Jersey, uh, as you you sat, you know, on your 
your waterfront estate, um, watching Ivory Tower. people Ivory. fall into the Hudson uh, from the shaking. Um, I don't believe you rescued any of them. Um, nope. Shameful, nonetheless. Um, but yeah, you can't I, swim. I, not I, my I, fault. I think I think New Jersey needs to uh, needs to own up to its shortcomings. Now, there you go. You Joe, experience... Johanna put it perfectly. It's it's a it's a bunch of nasty gas releasing swampland. Now, why would she, why would she be complimenting New Jersey right now? Like that was actually based on like <laughs> the reality of New Jersey. I mean, that's a that's a compliment. But all right, let's be brutally honest here. So there was an earthquake this week, and that's your mm-hmm. beef of the week. But but how did it? Okay, how was your life upended because of this earthquake? Like, look, I I am I am stuck underground at the moment, Brian, uh, because of this. I mean, <laughs> but it. Thought we dis- but, I thought we discussed this prior to the show. But is that not the fact of your faulty 17th century colonial suburban home that you chose to purchase with Mrs. Ron? Like, is it is the fact the fact that you built a house that could not stand the nearby tectonic plates shifting? Um, you know, well, you, I will, you, I will you say buy that, an aluminum right? shack. You buy an aluminum shack that's held together by caulk and stucco um, and then somehow expect it to last forever. You cannot blame New Jersey for that. That's unreasonable. First of all, uh, my house was built by the founding fathers, uh, the people who built this country. And not all of us can afford brand new construction, you know, on a coastline, on a river line, six floor views, flooring. Uh, laundry rooms, this kind of stuff. We not all of us. Some of us, you know, we, we basketball we treasure, court. Don't forget my we own treasure. Own. Old things, old things that have been around for for generations. Um, but now, uh, listen, I am I am down here. I am I am in my bunker. It is what it is. Um, did not have the worst uh, earthquake experience. I think we have to go uh, to another Pennsylvania man, Brian, uh, and that is. Uh, Justin Allen of Horsham, who in a in a ironically timed twist, was in the middle getting uh, of getting a vasectomy when the earthquake Ooh. hit. Um, he was uh, apparently forced the surgeon uh, to set down his scalpel for a moment um, as the guy wondered whether quote a train was passing. The doctor was like, "I think this is an earthquake." Um, I figured he was messing with me, but he had to stop. Because everything was shaking. You had a vasectomy a couple of years ago, Ron. Um, you I, said I to me that voice. you had it. You told me that you went to um, Taiwan during typhoon season, and your doctor had to put his scalpel down. Uh, excuse me, their scalpel. I do not want to assume gender, but you told me that a. Uh, I believe it was. Um, Typhoon Ivanka was going through um, Thailand at the time while you were having your vasectomy, and um, you you said that you had um, absolutely no side effects to it, other than obviously um, you know the leakage from the poorly sewn um, uh, wound uh, that uh, kept coming out of your uh, scrotum. Can you a math story? Can you imagine having a vasectomy? And first off, I mean, the guy, no offense, the guy was out there. It, it's, it's now done. It, ooh, no, he was think not about out. it. He it's not done under general. They, they used, they used a local anesthetic and he was awake for the process. I had general anesthesia in like 1997 or no, no, no. It was probably 99 when I had mine, but Jesus Christ, I had general. I remember being shaved by a large Indian man. Um, not a joke. That is not an exaggeration. He's a large, I don't think it was. a large Indian man. But so you're telling me that he had local anesthesia and an earthquake happens while they're slicing up his balls. Wow, that's scary. But apparently, uh, everything went smoothly, and he was uh, he was recovering at home uh, the next day. Mm, okay, God bless him. Um, I, if I were him, I would, um, test multiple times to ensure that there's no sperm 
in his um, ejaculate. Uh, Brian, where were you during the great earthquake of 2024? I was sitting my, at my desk at work, it, um, minding my business, doing work. And then um, I, 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 I cannot remember whether I was in the middle of a um, enthralling email or whether I was in the middle of a um, invigorating Excel worksheet. But um, I just remember the ground just kind of going. And it sounded, it made me actually think, um, it felt like one of the upstairs neighbor on the um, floor of our, above us was moving heavy equipment. That's all. That's what it sounded like. Um, right. I had a friend who lived in upstate New York reach out um, to say, um, hey, did you just feel something? I was like, yeah, I felt the earth, I, I felt the ground move. And she was like, I felt the ground move also. And next thing I knew, um, you know, a whole bunch of people started chiming in um, to uh, ask, uh, you know, if, if, if other people had done it. Let me ask you a question, Ron. I'm going to ask you. Sure. Um, obviously, you, you have been affected. You are in your earthquake underground, undisclosed location due to the fact of the um, uh, Secret Service not being comfortable with the stability of your home. But what is general etiquette, you know, post-earthquake in terms of, um, you know, reaching out to strangers to, or, or people you know to see if they're okay? Because I, I had a friend who mm -hmm. I had um, uh, been speaking to who reached out to me and stated uh, a disappointment that they had with me for not inquiring as to their safety. Um, I, you know, I think, you know, if, if you have close friends, family, loved ones that were in, you know, the radius of the epicenter, <laughs> I think just a, a quick text just saying, hey, just checking in, making sure you're okay. Um, I, you know, I think is it's appreciated. I mean, is it? Is it a requirement? Maybe not, but is it appreciated? I would say so. Because I had a friend, uh, you know, close friend, I would say, dear right. friend, you know, sure. I don't want to, I don't want to make things uncomfortable. I would say a very dear friend who lives in, um, how would I describe this? Northeast suburban um, Philadelphia. You know, not they're right. not even in Philadelphia. They're on the outskirts. No. They actually reached out to me to vocalize disappointment that I had not reached out to who um, uh, ascertain the safety of them and their missus. And I was very surprised that, you know, they perceived that the, um, that it was socially um, expected of me to say, Hey, you're nowhere near this small earthquake, but I just want to make sure you're okay. And it just felt, um, I felt like I was being called out, but I didn't feel like I had done anything wrong. What do you think? What is okay. etiquette at that point? You know, I, you know, it's, it's so rare um, that we deal with earthquakes that maybe there isn't set etiquette. Maybe that's just something, you know, you, 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 you go with what's inside your heart as to what is right and what is wrong. And what if there's nothing but just black coal inside of your well, heart? I think that's maybe just something other people need to remember at times. And lower their expectations of you. Ooh, it really hurt. Really, really, really hurt. That was Brian. The belt, Ron. Yeah. Let's get to our stories of the week. It's been Ooh. listen. There, there's been a ton of stories that we have not mm -hmm. been able to touch because you were gone. An right. entire bridge fell, Brian, in the state of Maryland. Just not even on our radar at this point because of how long nope. ago it was. So we so have long. stories this week that we would like to make sure um, don't get missed like that. Brian, Correct. what is your story of the week this week? Every now and you get every now and then you get a trifecta um, where it hits three a major um, uh, zeitgeist um, uh, topics that just kind of captures the essence of America. My story this week involves a gentleman by the name of Peter Owens. Ron, do you have a photo of Mr. Peter Owens? Uh, hold on. Matt, put up the Owens photo. 
Peter Owens, listen, clean cut gentleman appears to have, you know, a, a, a slight case of male pattern baldness, but that doesn't make him a bad person. I mean, we're, we're all rooting for him. Um, Peter Owens, Florida man. Florida. Okay, Florida. so it checks off the Florida man. The Florida man, Peter Owens, 35, was arrested this past week after he allegedly assaulted a Walgreens store manager with a Bible on Easter Sunday. That's right, Ron. Peter Owens was arrested and charged with felony battery after an incident that unfolded at a Walgreens store in Clearwater Beach on March 31st. Apparently, Owens entered the Walgreens store at 1130. Now, if you are going into a Walgreens at 1130 on a Sunday night, I mean, there's only a couple things you should be buying. Condoms, Plan Bs, and... I'm going to say Reese's peanut butter cups. Unfortunately, Owens was not there in that Walgreens store to purchase one of those three. I like to refer to them as the Holy Trinity. Um, sure. He went in there to purchase a pair of headphones until um, he apparently got into a verbal altercation with a store employee over the merchandise. I'd love to know. Unfortunately, the story here does not state exactly how you get from, hey, I think I need some headphones wonder if these are any good, to actually getting into an argument with an employee. The argument escalated after an employee um, felt the need to get the store manager, at which point Mr. Owens then allegedly smacked the store manager in her face with the Bible Ooh. after she asked him to leave the story. So listen, we love a God-fearing individual who uses their Bible to physically assault retail <laughs> employees. I mean, nothing says I love God like beating somebody up who's working at a Walgreens at 1130 at night. Those people have been through enough. They need our support. You should be in there saying thank you for working right now. I appreciate the fact that you have made my life a little bit easier. Unfortunately, Mr. Owens did not take that approach. Um, he is currently, um, uh, he was recently, excuse me, he was arrested, brought to Pinellas County Jail. Next day, posted $5,000 bond. Um, we'll see where it goes from this. But uh, hitting, a, uh, hitting a, a, a retail employee with the Bible does not make you, uh, you know, a, a lover of God. Let's just be it honest. Seems a bit, it seems a bit excessive. It's just bad That's form, Ron. Bad form. Just my tip. Ron, what's your yeah. story of the week? Uh, so my story, Brian, uh, have you watched uh, The Three Body Problem on Netflix yet? No. All right. Well, number one, put it on your list. It's very it's very good so far. Six what is it, The Three before. Body Problem? Three Body Problem. Um, so this is uh, Lin Chi uh, from Hong Kong. He is, uh, oh my God! I think I bumped I, into him on my trip. Whoa! He is a uh, he's a he was a billionaire fan of uh, the Three Body Problem, which was a Chinese sci-fi novel. Um, he really wanted to um, bring this novel to TV. Um, he uh, had uh, made a lot of cash in 2014 after his gaming company went public, became a billionaire, uh, managed to uh, in 2020 get uh, a contract with uh, Netflix to get this, uh, this series put up and on the air. Unfortunately, um, he would not live to see it um, as he was poisoned and killed at age 39. Uh, the culprit what? was one of Lynn's own executives, a high-flying lawyer who helped Lynn's Yozu Games secure the rights to adapt the highly acclaimed trilogy. After a falling out with his boss, Zhu Yao gifted Lin a bottle of what he said were probiotic pills, uh, but which contained a cocktail of lethal toxins that he bought off of the dark web. Um, he, uh, he killed the guy. He uh, went to trial. Uh, he, was con he was sentenced to death for murder uh, by a court in Shanghai uh, on March 22nd, today after the much-anticipated debut of Three-Body Problem on Netflix. Wow. 
So well, I guess that's the last story. time I take a bottle of probiotics from you. I mean, I know every yeah. time I go there, you tell me that I have to do the work. You tell me I need to buy a bottle of colloidal bronze off of you. And then you tell me that I need to buy a three-month supply of probiotic pills off of you. And now I know I, I can't do that anymore. Yes. At least five toxins were detected in Lynn's body, including mercury and tetrodotoxin, tetro uh, an extremely potent poison found in pufferfish. Um, in addition, he also poisoned beverages in the offices of two executives that he had disputes with, causing four colleagues to fall sick. Um, however, four, all four of them survived. Question. So the photo you have up, is he the guy that was charged with murder or is he the guy he is, who died? He was the guy that was murdered. I was not able to find uh, a photo of the murderer himself. So that, but this was the, the gentleman, uh, Mr. Chi, that uh, was, was poisoned and killed. What's the story of three body problem? Um, so without um, ruining the story too much, it basically um, it basically is about um, aliens. We 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 make contact with aliens. Someone makes contact with aliens from the planet Earth, and the mm -hmm. aliens are now on their way to Earth um, to in essence, conquer the planet and remove us, you know, so they can take over the planet because they have a very unstable um, uh, solar system that they live in because of the three body problem, right? Mm. Which you were a physics buff in college. I'm sure um, you're well aware of the three body problem. I am completely unaware of physics. I almost failed. It was one of the mm, few classes in school I almost failed. Um, what is the three body problem? So the three body problem, and I'm sure I'm I'm not getting this completely right, but in physics, um, if you want to see how two bodies will interact with each other, there apparently mm -hmm. is a finite number of ways that you know two planets or a sun and a planet or what have you can interact with each other. Once you add a third body to that equation, um, there becomes an infinite number of ways that these bodies can react. And you can never get a stable um, ecosystem because of it. Really? Okay. Yeah. A little education for you. Certainly doesn't sound like a subject matter that is worth killing over. Uh, allegedly? Do I need to say allegedly well, or is he found guilty No, because he's been, he's been guilty and sentenced to death. So I think, right. um, I think you're okay. Is now the right time to say what are you watching? Um, I mean, if you want to talk See about guys. what you're watching, I mean, now would be as good a time as any. Because I, you know, obviously I'm watching Three Body Problem, but please, you tell me yeah. what you're watching. Um, well, I, uh, I've, I've, I've been doing a lot of catching up, but first off, um, I watched the new Dave Attell uh, special on Netflix. I believe it's called Hot Cross Buns. Um, watched that uh, very short. Probably about 35 minutes. Not sure. You know, you got, you, you've got a guy like a tell who could probably go up there and do 90 minutes of, of new, of comedy that's never been heard. The man does not put out specials. He does not subscribe to the approach no, a lot yeah. of the younger comics do, which is, you know, put out a special every year, every other year, just keep pumping out the product for social media. Um, you know, but for somebody considering how much of a, you know, a classic joke writer he is, you would have thought that he would have, you know, been able to put out a full hour. Highly entertaining. Also, Tom Segura, I don't know um, if you've watched his specials, but he's become very popular. Um, yes. I think the last time he came around, he did Prudential Center. Um, I mean, he's he's at the arena level. He does the podcast with Kreischer. Um, the special I watched was Ledgehammer, um, highly entertaining. There's something about okay. delivery that I that really resonated with me. I did enjoy Sledgehammer. I tried watching um, what is it? Uh, uh, che uh, cheeseburger, um, the one with uh, uh, Andrew Santino special. As you can see, I put oh, yeah. a lot of um, uh, found it unwatchable. Um, turned it off. Yeah. After Ten minutes was not uh, uh, connecting with me. I also fear, and I mean, I'm just being upfront and honest. I also fear that I have a um, 
my personal issue of connecting with people that are significantly younger than me. Um, I have a hard time taking them seriously when they start talking about their life problems and you realize you're 28, you have no life problems by comparison to reality. You're still, you're still in la la land. Um, I did finish the octopus murders. You know, you turn me like on. it. Very interesting. Just freaky. Um, you know, you want, you want to reach point, you want to reach a point where you sit there and say that this is just a paranoid person who is, um, you know, just looking for, um, a conspiracy out there, but it just, it's too believable to not be true. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It was a four episode, um, uh, docu-series, uh, if you like a good conspiracy theory, um, especially dating back to the Ronald Reagan age. That's for you, William. Um, I, I, and then earlier today, I watched, there's a documentary on Hulu called um, Freaknik, The Wildest Party Never Told, which is about a, um, a, a spring break tradition that started in the early 90s in Atlanta, where African-American youth um, instead of uh, going to uh, the Florida, uh, you know, Fort Lauderdale or Miami, this was before Miami, um, they, 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 they chose to spend their spring break in um, Atlanta and the wild times that resulted um, in it. You know, I love a good early 90s, um, just African-American kids, you know, showing a lot of skin, um, being sexually provocative. That is my shit. Um, That's in I your wheelhouse. Oh, of course, absolutely. Listen, when there is a girl with back wearing booty shorts, um, you know, uh, it's just she's going to dominate me. We know that, and that's my thing. That's that. You know, we don't kink shame around here. That's what we don't do. Ron, what are you watching? Um, in addition to Three Body Problem, uh, also watched a documentary on Netflix called The Anti-Social Network, um, kind of digging into the origins of 2chan, which then started 4chan, which then started 8chan. Uh, That's what that's about. And, and Q. Yeah, it, it is. But it, I, you know, I we watched the, the documentary on the on yes. Q previously. And like the, the one... The one kid with the uh, developmental disease in the wheelchair that started 8chan that was in the queue. Yes. Zach, he's in this too. And like a lot of people that are have been in other kind of social network conspiracy theory uh, documentaries are in this. I, you know, I don't think you will learn a lot new. Like I think everything that's kind of addressed in the anti-social network, like, you know, the, the big takeaway is, oh, people should get off of social media and go outside. Well, all right. Yeah, no shit. Like, oh, that. lying on the internet is bad and causes, you know, January 6th and Q and everything else. But there really wasn't anything new there. Uh, so it was a little okay. boring. And then there's a new series on Netflix called Files of the Unexplained. So it's uh, about like hauntings and alien invasions and things like that. And I watched the first one, which was about an alien abduction. It was uh, the Pascagoula alien abduction someplace in mississippi and i guess the the one thing i will say is that it was a 35 minute episode and i watched it as long as i could and paused it to turn it off and there were still 10 minutes left and i was like you they had already re they had already repeated so much in that first 25 minutes mm -hmm. like it was just very boring so uh, i may try a second episode just to see if it gets any better but um at yeah. this point can't recommend it Okay. And uh, watch a lot of basketball, Brian. We had the uh, the women's final today. Um, mm -hmm. North or South Carolina beating Iowa. Um, I yes. watched the, uh, the the semifinal Iowa against UConn. Um, great, great game. Caitlin Clark, great player, um, smart player. She was up, you know, by uh, by a point or two at the end of the game. Uh, threw you know threw the ball out of bounds to to keep UConn from getting it so they could win the game. I understand some people were upset because the line was two and a half on that game, but you know she was going for the win, Brian, and you have to respect that. Listen, I I 
I have a problem when um, uh, sports fans refer to white athletes as smart and intelligent while, um, you know, uh, I've also heard you refer to African-American athletes as, you know, gritty and, you know, using their body. You know, it's just, it's, I don't appreciate I think the where, I think standard. where your problem is, I think where your problem is coming from is if I remember you had sent out an eternal memo asking that we never refer to any women as smart or intelligent on the podcast. And I think that's really uh, what the challenge is. But regardless, but speaking of Listen. Iowa, Brian. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, can we, can we talk about this stolen identity story uh, from someone who, as it turns out, was a University of Iowa hospital employee? Like this, this is one of those stories, not this guy. I don't know why I put that up there. This is one of those stories that um, you read and it's, it's, it's horrible because somebody had their identity stolen. But then when you read sure. what happened to the individual um, that had their identity stolen, um, it gets even worse. Let me pull up the mugshot of the guy that stole this person's identity. So this, oh. I hate so many pop-ups on news pages, Brian, and I'm just not, is that, um, I'm not a fan. Is, is that uh, like your John Senator Fetterman? Fetterman? <laughs> it looks like it's John Fetterman, uh, but it's it? actually Matthew David Kieran's age 58. Um, he pled guilty last week uh, to federal charges that he had been living under another man's identity since 1988. Uh, he worked in the University of Iowa Hospital's IT department uh, from 2013 to 2023, um, but he apparently uh, worked at the hospital under the name William Donald Woods, um, an alias he started using back in 1988 when he worked with the real William Woods at a hot dog cart in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He used Woods' identity in every aspect of his life, including obtaining employment, insurance, official documents, even paying taxes uh, under that name. Um, even more tragic is um, he managed to get a copy of Woods' uh, birth certificate from the state of Kentucky using information he found about Woods found on Ancestry.com. Um, sure. So in 2019, the real William Woods was homeless. He was living in L.A., he went to a branch of a national bank and explained that he recently discovered somebody was using his credit and had accumulated a lot of debt. He was trying to find out information about the account numbers. Um, and so Woods gave the bank employee his real social security card and California ID, which matched the information the bank had on file, but he wasn't able to answer any of the security questions because this other guy, Kieran's, had opened the accounts. So the bank, employee called Kieran's, whose phone number was attached to the accounts. He answered the security questions correctly, said no one in California should have access to the accounts. So the bank calls LAPD. The officers speak with Woods. They speak with this guy, Kieran's. Kieran's faxes the LA police a copy of Woods' social security card and birth certificate, as well as a Wisconsin driver's license that Kieran's had acquired in Woods' names. And so when, uh, when Woods got all upset over this, he gets arrested and charged with identity theft and false imp impersonation. And because oh throughout the judicial process, he keeps insisting that he was William Woods. He, in February, 2020, a judge rules that he was not mentally competent to stand trial. And he was sent to a medical hospital in California where he received psychotropic medication and other mental health treatment. He ends up pleading no contest in 2021, and he was sentenced to two years imprisonment um, in order to pay $400 in fines. Uh, thankfully, now that this gentleman has been arrested and pled guilty, because his big issue, oh uh, so shockingly, the issue wasn't the fact that he stole this guy's identity, but he borrowed money um, from a bank in someone else's identity. So that's what he is going to prison for 30 years over. Holy but the shit, poor guy that he stole the identity so from, scary. not only is he dealing with being homeless, but then he tries to prove he is who he says he is, and he gets thrown into a mental hospital. Hold on. So he was homeless, and then suddenly he now has a home. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can look at it that way. Yeah. I mean, 
You're telling me roof over his head, three square three squares, meals, three squares a day, a a, a working uh, you know uh, bathroom. I'm assuming the, the showers with like shampoo and soap. I, I would imagine yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to go out on a limb here, Ron. You may not agree with me. Just, just give me a little leash and let's see where I go with this. Oh, but I, if I you're telling me that leash. he went, you're telling me he went from being completely homeless, living on the street, eating garbage cans, eating out of garbage cans. <laughs> no, um, he ate garbage cans. He ate the actual yeah. metal garbage can. Um, and then he goes three to like a, being able three to three in a cot, which I believe was your nickname in college. <laughs> I saw a movie once called Three Huts in a Cot. Um, I'm saying that it's not necessarily as tragic as say like you were to you know be wrapped up in that system and be forced to live in a mental hospital. And he's That's getting psychotropic medications too. I mean, he is oh my God. tripping every single day. Tripping balls, tripping balls. I'm i I'm I'm just saying that like, you know, it's not good what happened to him, but sure, you know, sure. it could be a lot worse. All right, uh, Brian. We get to uh, we get to visit a segment that we haven't had a chance to uh, to do in a while. Uh, one of our more popular ones. Whenever we do get to do it, it's time for fuck around and find Ooh, out, Brian. And not this. surprisingly, we once again get to deal with someone uh, from Florida. Um, Florida. This is this is Brent George, Brian. Uh, he is a Florida man who was at a Disney World restaurant. Um, he allegedly uh, approached a table of four at Bellevue Lounge inside Disney's Boardwalk Inn, where he allegedly started to taunt a girl with Down syndrome. Um, the woman's mother uh, allegedly confronted George, demanded to know if he was making fun of her daughter, he allegedly shoved the woman twice before slapping the woman's daughter-in-law in the face when she tried to calm the escalation. Um, he then allegedly punched uh, the woman's husband in the neck who returned a jab to his face. Um, a bystander intervened and wrapped George in a bear hug in an effort to remove him from the restaurant. Um, George told police he was, quote, struck by a glass cup during the fight, also had several cuts on his face. Um, after questioning everybody present, uh, he wanted to press charges against the group of four, uh, but declined to provide police a statement. However, the other four uh, did provide statements, so he was arrested and charged with four counts of battery. He was taken to Orange County Jail, where he spent the night. Uh, his wife paid his $4,000 bond the next day. What that story lacks is um, what was the um, buildup to the reason why he would um, be interacting with that other family, with the Down syndrome? Apparently, this may shock you, Brian. The word is he had been drinking excessively. Oh, my gosh. I thought it was because the person with Down syndrome was making grilled cheeses, and he wanted I, I don't. I don't have any uh, any confirmation on that. Sorry. Was it Uncle Danny? It was. I, I, where'd you get that cheese, Danny? Uh, I don't believe it was. I don't believe it was. Can we talk about? And this is this has been this has been burning through my soul all week, Brian. Sure. Can sure, we can we it. talk about the Norwegian cruise line passengers? Oh, that for yes. some reason were on Please. so many fucking national news channels this week i it 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 boggled my mind i think i saw this on the today show first then i saw it on nbc nightly news with lester holt um if if you were not aware of the the story there were some uh u.s passengers they were on a cruise um over in in africa um they had gotten uh, they were at one of the ports, and they went on a private tour. Uh, their tour ran late. They got back late, and the ship left them behind. And then mm-hmm. this whole this whole story about, oh, they had to race through seven different countries to catch up with the ship. Well, I mean, you're in Africa. Mm-hmm. Every, there's a bunch of countries there. Like, every 
everything you cross it go through as a country it's not sure. like, you know like saying i had to go across seven states well if you're in the united sure. states yeah you have to do that but what i don't understand number one i don't understand how this gets to the level of national news like the the two primary people that they talked to were jill and jay uh campbell um married couple that were were on this tour and there was a 20-day voyage on norwegian cruise lines um who do they know that gets them on national news? Because how many times... Ron, time people... out, time out, Ron. All right, all right. Not everybody is as familiar with this story as you are. Can you all please right. rewind and, you know, let um, let us know, bring us up to speed so we have the same information you do. Deep breaths. And I also believe that you do, you, you have an obligation to our listeners right now to let them know um, whether you are a shareholder in Norwegian Cruise Lines. Um, I am a previous uh, shareholder in uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines. Um, I, I no longer am. Um, it's just going through a battery. Wait a second. Right? Stop. Stop right now. Stop right now, you bastard. <laughs> what? You sold your Norwegian stock? I told you that when I liquidated all my stocks the other two years ago. You never told me you liquidated all your. I still have fucking you. Disney stock that you told me to buy. Oh yeah, you sold your. Everything. You sold Norwegian. Oh yeah, yeah, nice little profit on that. Are you fucking insane? I bought that at like thirty five, and it's barely crossed twenty. How the fuck? Why would you sell and not tell me to? I told you. I said I'm, I'm closing. You I'm never closing told me you were going to sell. <sighs> now we've we've I'm gotten on a tangent. Janelle needs to understand. Needs to know the story, Brian. So can you oh, put you your your me. petty little issue uh, off to the side? You fucked me it, so it, hard on these stocks. You fucked me so hard on these stocks. Keep going. Harder than Liverpool fucked you earlier today. No, no, no. I fucked me with. I, 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 that was me. That was not Liverpool. Anyway. The, the initial story was about eight Norwegian cruise passengers, including a pregnant woman and an elderly man with a heart condition. They claimed that they have been stranded on an African island without money and vital medications after the vessel left port without them. Um, they were apparently stuck on the central African island of Sao Tome um, after the, uh, they say, after the captain of the ship allegedly refused to let them report. But at the end of the day, these folks were on their own with a private tour and they missed the all aboard time. And so they weren't able to board and the ship left without them. And then they had to figure out a way for them to get to Senegal, which was the next port of call for the ship so that they can, um, that they could reboard the ship. And, you know, Norwegian cruise lines even said guests are responsible for ensuring that they return to the ship at the published time, which is communicated over the intercom in all of their daily communications it's posted when they exit the vessel. So these folks, and these is, folks admit, well, yeah, our, our tour ran late, but you know, uh, oh, our tour captain said he called and spoke to the captain of the ship. But number one, I don't believe. But two, even so, again, yeah. how many people are on a cruise ship? Hundreds, thousands? Thousand. Yeah. And these eight people feel that they should have waited, you know, I, I don't know. I, I it's, it, it kind of, it reeks of entitlement to me, Brian. Okay. You, I was I had this whole argument that you're just being a company man, but now I realize you don't even own any stock. I, I have 30 shares in that sh piece of shit that you told me to buy four years ago and I'm still holding. Every time you're like, oh, diamond hands, diamond hands. I you don't have diamond hands. <laughs> you don't have What's diamond it? hands. If you don't listen when I communicate to you, this is, you don't speak my love language, Brian, is what it comes down to. When I, when I have a conversation with you and say, I'm, I'm selling off my stock so I can take the capital loss on my taxes. You never said that you were selling. You never told me you were selling. Is, could this be the end of the podcast? Is this, is this the straw that breaks the proverbial camel's back? No, I love you. I love you way too much. I could never yeah, let you go. You go. And then shut your whole. Have you not figured out that like I'm an emotional doormat and like you could literally do anything and I would still, I would still. I, mean, take, I, 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 I think just, I think just this level of abuse. I'm guessing you're probably fully erect right now. 
At this age, 51 and a half, hmm, <laughs> takes a lot more Not than so that. Much. It takes a lot so much. more than that. Yeah. But I mean, what's your, well, what's your take on it, Brian? Again, do you understand how this got to be oh, national news? I'm, I, I'm going to be brutally honest here. It's just like if I were on a cruise, I would be so anxious about oh, yeah. the um, uh, uh, the time that you have to be back um, uh, to not miss the, the, the boat that I don't know that I would be able to relax on any of these excursions. Like uh, my, I would be checking my watch every five minutes, just obsessed over that time. And some dude in Senegal being like, that's okay. I spoke to your captain. It is all okay. I would not be all right with that. I, I mean, um, was that, yeah, was that a Sangalese accent you just did right there? Jesus. Well done with the Sangalese. Um, I, it was my attempt at it. I, I know they speak a bastardized uh, uh, version of the King's English, but yeah. Um, you know, if, if the boat says, Hey, we're leaving at seven and you show up at eight o'clock, you're fucked. Like, you know, it's not, it's, it's one thing to be five minutes late, but you can't show up an hour late. You just can't. Yeah. Listen, I, you know, I had a, uh, I was coming back from a business trip the other week and, um, you know, they, you're not able to check a bag. After, if you, up, you can check a bag up to 45 minutes prior to your departure time. And we mm -hmm. had some, we had some transportation issues. So I literally got to the airport. 45 minutes before my flight and was not able to check my bag. But you know whose responsibility it was, Brian, at the end of the day? Yours. It was mine. It was mine. Yeah. I didn't call Lester Holt. I didn't call Hoda Cupby. I didn't call Savannah Guthrie. Um, I didn't call Mario Lopez um, on Access Hollywood. So what happens in that um, instance? So there was... so. Thankfully, there was uh, someone who had, had ended up driving us to the airport who was leaving the next day, and he volunteered to bring my suitcase back with him. Otherwise, I would have had to be rebooked on another flight, which there really wasn't any because it was, you know, Easter weekend. Oh, so they'll sit there. So they won't even bring it on board uh, on the plane. They just say you can't get on the plane. Just, well, you can't bring you can get on the plane, but your bag can't get through security because it's not a carry on. So what do you do? So can you send it on a later plane? Uh, no, you have to, you have to be, you have to, you know, they said like, we'd have to change your flight because we can't just give your luggage a flight. Wow. So I guess it makes sense. I know. It does in a way. Lesson learned. Listen, this is the post 9-11 world that we live in. You know, it's been um, over 20 years, you know, um, you know, uh, transportation is not, um, you know what it used to be you know i got on a plane excuse me i got on a train not that long ago in um uh yangshuo china uh taking a high speed rail train which uh approached uh 200 miles per hour but i got on this Impressive. i was getting on this train from yangshuo to shenzhen and um uh, little did i know that i was not supposed to be bringing um a uh, a water bottle in my uh, carry on bag. Um, really? Lady made me drink the water um, at security to before letting me through, so that she could uh, oh, ascertain that it, that it like was an explosive. That it wasn't an explosive. She actually stopped me. Um, you know, told me I needed to drink from it. And keep in mind, her English poor. Um, my Cantonese English, worse. Poor. My Mandarin. Un, you know, just literally um, uh, non-existent. Uh, but between uh, the two of us, we were able to uh, communicate that um, I was going to be drinking out of that water bottle uh, if I planned on uh, getting through. Uh, I took a very healthy swig. And um, had she not told me to stop, I would have just kept fucking drinking it. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you're in mainland China and uh, a security official tells you to drink out of your water bottle, uh, you keep drinking um, because you have no interest in going to a Chinese labor prison. Um, so uh, I drank that water. At any point were you confused and felt that you needed to splash some of the water from your bottle on her face? No, not at all. I, okay. I wanted to just make sure I, brought, I, I, I drank as much. Though I will say this, I did get a kick, and I, I know we're approaching an hour. We still have a bunch of stuff to get to, so I do not want to. I did get a kick out of the... Um, 
uh, local Chinese, especially when I was not in a, in a, uh, in Hong Kong, just openly staring at me because I was a white man walking into a restaurant or, um, you know, uh, you know, wherever I was going, um, literally watch people put down their chopsticks at a restaurant to just openly stare at me and, and, and follow me as I walk through the room to sit down. Wild, wild experience. It was, you know, you, you, you hear these stories about black people going down, you know, into these small towns in Alabama and talking about how uncomfortable they were, you know, uh, being the minority and the, uh, you know, uh, feeling uncomfortable being surrounded by uh, white people. Uh, I did not feel that, um, you know, in these small, in, in, in Guilin, China, um, where people stared. Now, I had heard through certain channels <laughs> that they stared because they, they looked at like your gray hair and they felt that you were 90, 100 years old. Is that, is that factual? That, that's hurtful. That's hurtful, Ron. It's just very hurtful. Um, Brian, we have something else that's going to try and kill us soon. Hold on. Um, hold on. Speaking yeah. of hurtful, here comes Allie jumping in. Talk about I had a booger hanging out of my nose. Come on. Be better. More accurate. Be better, Allie. Uh, Allie, you're better than that. You're better than making booger jokes. Jo Johanna saying that your top button was closed and it was 85 degrees with 100% humidity. That probably. If that wasn't so accurate, because it was in like the or in the eighties, and it was a insane level of humidity. There were days. There were a couple of days I went through three shirts during the course of the day, and I was always uh, buttoned up to that. Oh, I wish Joe didn't know me that well. God damn it, she nailed me on that one. That was actually very accurate. Well done, Joe. Well done. Well done. Um, so Brian, uh, there is yeah. a potential flu bird flu pandemic, which could be quote um, one hundred times worse than COVID. Uh, it may be on the horizon after a rare human case was discovered in Texas. Uh, the H5N1 avian flu has spread rapidly since the new strain was detected in 2020, uh, affecting wild birds in every state. Uh, but now, Brian, it has left over to mammals with uh, cattle herds uh, across four states becoming infected. And on Monday, Federal health officials announced that a dairy worker in Texas uh, caught the virus. Um, this has apparently been on the top of the pandemic list for many years. And now that we are starting to see it uh, cross the barrier from bird to mammal to human, um, this could potentially be the, the, next, uh, the next big pandemic, which, listen, uh, I've been kind of bored uh, since the last pandemic ended. I'm kind of excited about this. Um, are you are you shitting me? Yes, I am. but this is so. This because is a, a scary note, Brian. Is around fifty two percent of humans who have contracted H five N one since two thousand and three have died. Uh, in comparison, um, COVID right now kills less than 0.1 percent of those that infected, but its highest fatality rate was around twenty percent. So uh, this bird flu right now, again, it hasn't reached the, the masses to really see how it impacts people on a large scale, but has the potential to be up to two and a half times more deadly uh, than COVID was. Jesus, that's pretty scary. Yeah. You know, maybe we shouldn't be fucking around with this stuff. Uh, are, you, are you fucking around with bird flu? When, when did this happen? Um... I mean, uh, listen, I, 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 I had the opportunity to go to Wuhan and I chose not to. Wise choice. Wise choice. Uh, Brian, we are getting close to the end of the episode. You know what else we haven't done in a couple of weeks, Brian? Uh, we have not done our After Dark, which, as many of you know, is exclusive content for our Patreon subscribers. We do it at, uh, at 930, so about 26 minutes from now. Uh, we will mm -hmm. be we will be jumping on the after dark. Uh, if you are not a Patreon subscriber, um, it's really something you should do for yourself. Um, you know, it's a lot of people talk about self care. Um, I think the best way of self care for individuals is to subscribe to our Patreon. You do it at the ten dollar level of or higher. Not only do you great mm -hmm. get some great swag, uh, but you get live access to after dark every Sunday uh, at nine thirty, and then. Every final Sunday of the month, 
Uh, we have our pajama party where all of our Patreon subscribers come on. And we just have a good time. It's just fun. It's laughs. Yeah. Have a yeah, few yeah, drinks. It's fun times. Have a few yeah, chuckles. Yeah. So, but any, it's, any it's also stories? a place. It's also a place where we can kind of like you know loosen our neckline and get a little comfortable. Right. I mean, it's behind the paywall. Like that's the important thing. Is the fact that you know, like we do this podcast. It's one hour. It's free. It's for the masses. It's for everyone. You know, it's for the grandmothers. It's for the children. You know, ev everybody should be able to watch this podcast for free and enjoy it. But After Dark is a special beast. It's behind the paywall. It's 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 stuff that you know you don't want YouTube to know about. It's stuff that I'm not comfortable with the people over at Meta and Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp, you know, dealing with this. This time's gotta stop. Sorry, it's been a couple weeks. You know, so, around that. Oh, I appreciate it, I appreciate it. But I, I do like a fuck your story. Um, <laughs> fuck your story. God, I love that. Um, but yeah, no, it's a place where, you know, we do the kind of stories that, you know, the... Uh, you know that, that that are not necessarily appropriate for the masses. It's a little place where Ron, where Ron and I get a little bit more comfortable than we are during the podcast, and and you're all welcome. But we put it, you know, we put it behind the paywall because that is where people, um, you know, who are true lovers of the show, people who want to assist in offsetting some of the. You know, this show is not free, people. You know, yeah. there are, you know, to, to be able to pay for these streaming costs, to be able to pay for the, 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 the podcast hosting. I mean, there are costs associated to it. And we have reached, we've been reached out to consistently from people saying, hey, listen, how can we help out? That's how you can. There you go. Sign up for our Patreon, ronandbrianpodcast.com. Ron, it would be great if you were running the banner on the bottom, but I do not, ex I, I, I know that We outside, ran out of money. We ran out of money yeah, because yeah, we don't no, it's have a shame. Patreon subscribers. Cost that's a shame. Um, Ron and Brian Podcast .com, upper right hand corner, become a patron. Um, you know, support the show. It's little as five dollars a month gets you um, access to um, you know just exclusive, and then obviously at other tiers you can sign up for really delivers. You know, you get some you know live streaming, you get video. Um, you get, uh, uh, if I'm not correct, you get videos of me doing my prep for my colonoscopy recently. You know, we, Ron, maybe we're going to talk about what's my poop consistency over the past couple of weeks. Um, that right. is definitely a story. Um, a lot of blood. A lot of blood has been uh, coming out recently. Uh, but we're going to uh, talk we also, about it. You know, we, we, uh, we also let people know at the, at the platinum level, that's, I believe, 150 mm -hmm. per month, uh, you do get access to the Ron and Brian uh, Emergency Network. Um, which, yep. you know, New York kind of got slammed because they sent out texts like 24 minutes after the earthquake. Yep. Um, yep. Our responsiveness was much quicker. Um, we also forgot to mention, Brian, what tomorrow is. <laughs> tomorrow the is eclipse. The, uh, the total solar eclipse sponsored by the Ron and Brian podcast. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you uh, went in the areas where you were getting 100% uh, totality, um, look up at the, uh, at the eclipse and you will see the Ron and Brian logo. Um, it was, listen, it was a bit of a spend, but we feel that the promotion is worth it. I, I agree with you. It was, it was very worth it. Do you have any interest in seeing the eclipse? No, I'm going to be at work yeah. and I could give a shit. I, I, <laughs> I was earlier today. Somebody asked me if I wanted to buy eclipse glasses and my first reaction was just was to um, say something insulting to the person. And then I realized, you know what? No, I just said to him, listen, man, I'm going to be stuck inside of an office. Um, it would be lost on me. And then um, that was it. But I, 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 I do not understand. I don't get it. I just don't get these obsessions. I, with feel like I, I feel like I've seen so many videos of eclipses at this point that it's just going to yeah. look like every other eclipse that I've seen on TV up to now. Sure. It's just not that big of a deal at this point. Maybe, maybe that's just me. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe I don't know how to enjoy things anymore, Brian. Oh. And if it's my Wi-Fi bad or yours, 
you, you cut out a little bit. I think it's my Wi-Fi. Um, in the I bunker, cut out. The no, it could be. Not, uh, it's, it's, it's the bunker Wi-Fi isn't great. I have to talk to the secret okay, service about that. It's not your fault. But, Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're all good. I think, I think this is, I think it's been a great um, yep. first show back from your trip. We are two weeks away, Brian. Two weeks from the 300th episode of the Ron and Brian podcast. Allie says we are. What are we lose. doing for it? Uh, what are we doing for it? I mean, I I I know that I put forth the idea of um, bringing back um, some uh, 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 poor children from out to the area outside of Hong Kong. Um, you know, I know I put forth the idea to you and Matt where I purchased some young um, children from there. And during um, episode 300, we interview um, our new um, housemates. You nixed it. You said that you did not think that that was appropriate. You said that that was, um, I believe the word you used was problematic. Um, so I will not um, do episode 300 with my uh, little Hong Kong friend. But um, I don't know. What are we doing for 300? We'll have to, we'll have to, we'll, you know what we'll need to do, Brian? We'll need to do the work and we'll need to get ready for the 300th episode. Yes, sir. I like it. I like it. I love it. All right. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. We are going to close this episode. We are going to get ready for After Dark. We appreciate all of you joining us here on the Ron and Brian podcast. Patreon folks, we'll see you very shortly. Everybody else, we will see you next week. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the Ron and Brian podcast. We're live each week on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. You can find prior episodes, links to our social media, and everything else Ron and Brian at ronandbrianpodcast.com. See you.